of Rosicrucianism. Concerning this point, Albert Pike in his Morals and Dogma makes this significant statement his hell is but a negative purgatory. His heaven is composed of a series of cabalistic circles, divided by a cross, like the pantacle of Ezekiel. In the center of this cross blooms a rose, and we see the symbol of the adepts of the rose croix for the first time publicly expounded and almost categorically explained. Doubt has always existed as to whether the name Rosicrucian came from the symbol of the rose and cross, or whether this was merely a blind to deceive the uninformed and further conceal the true meaning of the order. Godfrey Higgins believes that the word Rosicrucian is not derived from the flower but from the word Ross, which means do. It is also interesting to note that the word Ras means wisdom, while Rus is translated concealment. Doubtless all of these meanings have contributed to Rosicrucian symbolism. A. E. Waite holds with Godfrey Higgins that the process of forming the Philosopher's Stone with the aid of dew is the secret concealed within the name Rosicrucian. It is possible that the dew referred to is a mysterious substance within the human brain, closely resembling the description given by alchemists of the dew which, falling from heaven, redeemed the earth. The cross is symbolic of the human body, and the two symbols together, the rose on the cross, signify that the soul of man is crucified upon the body, where it is held by three nails. It is probable that Rosicrucian symbolism is a perpetuation of the secret tenets of the Egyptian Hermes, and that the Society of Unknown Philosophers is the true link connecting modern masonry, with its mass of symbols, to ancient Egyptian Hermeticism, the source of that symbolism. In his Doctrine and Literature of the Kabbalah, A. E. Waite makes this important observation there are certain indications which point to a possible connection between Masonry and Rosicrucianism, and this, if admitted, would constitute the first link in its connection with the past. The evidence is, however, inconclusive, or at least unextricated. Freemasonry per se, in spite of the affinity with mysticism which I have just mentioned, has never exhibited any mystic character, nor has it a clear notion how it came by its symbols. Many of those connected with the development of Freemasonry were suspected of being Rosicrucians. Some, as in the case of Robert Flood, even wrote defenses of this organization. Frank C. Higgins, a modern Masonic symbolist, writes Dr. Ashmole, a member of this fraternity Rosicrucian, is revered by Masons as one of the founders of the first Grand Lodge in London. See Ancient Freemasonry. Elias Ashmole is but one of many intellectual links connecting Rosicrucianism with the genesis of Freemasonry. The Encyclopaedia Britannica notes that Elias Ashmole was initiated into the Freemasonic Order in 1646, and further states that he was the first gentleman, or amateur, to be accepted. On this same subject, Papus, in his Tarot of the Bohemians, has written we must not forger that the Rosicrucians were the initiators of Leibniz, and the founders of actual Freemasonry through Ashmole. If the founders of Freemasonry were initiated into the great arcanum of Egypt, and the symbolism of modern Masonry would indicate that such was the case, then it is reasonable to suppose that they secured their information from a society whose existence they admitted and which was duly qualified to teach them these symbols and allegories. One theory concerning the two orders is to the effect that Freemasonry was an outgrowth of Rosicrucianism. In other words, that the unknown philosophers became known through an organization which they created to serve them in the material world. The story goes on to relate that the Rosicrucian adepts became dissatisfied with their progeny and silently withdrew from the Masonic hierarchy, leaving behind their symbolism and allegories but carrying away the keys by which the locked symbols could be made to give tit their secret meanings. Speculators have gone so far as to state that, in their opinion, modern Freemasonry has completely absorbed Rosicrucianism and succeeded it as the world's greatest secret society. Other minds of equal learning declare that the Rosicrucian Brotherhood still exists, preserving its individuality as the result of having withdrawn from the Masonic Order. According to a widely accepted tradition, the headquarters of the Rosicrucian Order is near Carlsbad, in Austria see Dr. Franz Hartmann. Another version has it that a mysterious school, resembling in general principles the Rosicrucian Fraternity, which calls itself the Bohemian Brothers, still maintains its individuality in the Schwarzwald Black Forest of Germany. One thing is certain with the rise of Freemasonry, the Rosicrucian Order in Europe practically disappeared, 
and notwithstanding existing statements to the contrary, it is certain that the 18th degree commonly known as the Rose Kawa perpetuates many of the symbols of the Rosicrucian fire alchemists. In an anonymous unpublished manuscript of the 18th century bearing the earmarks of Rosicrucian Kabbalism appears this statement yet will I now give the overwise world a paradox to be solved, namely, that some illuminated men have undertaken to found schools of wisdom in Europe and these for some peculiar reason have called themselves Fritters Rosicrucis. But soon afterwards came false schools into existence and corrupted the good intentions of these wise men. Therefore, the order no longer exists as most people would understand existence, and as this fraternity of the Seculophili call themselves brothers of the Rosy Cross, so also will they in the Seculo Spiritus Sancti call themselves brothers of the Lily Cross and the Knights of the White Lion. Then will the schools of wisdom begin again to blossom, but why the first one chose their name and why the other shall also choose theirs, only those can solve who have understanding grounded in nature. Political aspirations of the Rosicrucians were expressed through the activities of Sir Francis Bacon, the Conta Street Germain, and the Quant di Cagliostro. The last named is suspected of having been an emissary of the Knights Templars, a society deeply involved in transcendentalism, as Eliphas Levi has noted. There is a popular supposition to the effect that the Rosicrucians were at least partial instigators of the French Revolution. Note particularly the introduction to Lord Bower Lytton's Rosicrucian novel Zanoni. Insert The Rosicrucian Rose From Jaime Figuren de Rosam Cruiser The rose is a yonic symbol associated with generation, fecundity, and purity. The fact that flowers blossom by unfolding has caused them to be chosen as symbolic of spiritual unfoldment. The red color of the rose refers to the blood of Christ, and the golden heart concealed within the midst of the flower corresponds to the spiritual gold concealed within the human nature. The number of its petals being ten is also a subtle reminder of the perfect Pythagorean number. The rose symbolizes the heart, and the heart has always been accepted by Christians as emblematic of the virtues of love and compassion, as well as of the nature of Christ, the personification of these virtues. The rose is a religious emblem as of great antiquity. It was accepted by the Greeks as a symbol of the sunrise, or of the coming of dawn and as metamorphosis, or golden ass, Apuleius, turned into a donkey because of his foolishness, regained his human shape by eating a sacred rose given to him by the Egyptian priests. The presence of a hieroglyphic rose upon the escutcheon of Martin Luther has been the basis of much speculation as to whether any connection existed between his reformation and the secret activities of the Rose Cross. Continued. The Third Postulate The third theory takes the form of a sweeping denial of Rosicrucianism, asserting that the so-called original order never had any foundation in fact but was entirely a product of imagination. This viewpoint is best expressed by a number of questions which are still being asked by investigators of this elusive group of metaphysicians. Was the Brotherhood of the Rose Cross merely a mythical institution created in the fertile mind of some literary cynic for the purpose of deriding the alchemical and hermetic sciences? Did the House of the Holy Spirit ever exist outside the imagination of some medieval mystic? Was the whole Rosicrucian story a satire to ridicule the gullibility of scholastic Europe? Was the mysterious Father C.R.C. a product of the literary genius of Johann Valentin André or another of similar mind, who, attempting to score alchemical and hermetic philosophy, unwittingly became a great power in furthering the cause of its promulgation? That at least one of the early documents of the Rosicrucians was from the pen of André there is little doubt, but for just what purpose he compiled it still remains a matter of speculation. Did André himself receive from some unknown person, or persons, instructions to be carried out? If he wrote the chymical nuptials of Christian Rosencruitz when only fifteen years old, was he overshadowed in the preparation of that book? To these vital questions no answers are forthcoming. A number of persons accepted the magnificent imposture of André's absolute truth. It is maintained by many that, as a consequence, numerous pseudo-societies sprang up, each asserting that it was the organization concerning which the Fama Fraternitatis and the Confessio Fraternitatis were written. 
Beyond doubt there are many spurious orders in existence today. But few of them can offer 